Tonight's session of Amusing Myself in the Shop is assisted by Breadcrumb Trail, which is a Black Forest Cake-inspired cherry porter from uh, Vessel Beer, who do their brewing uh, in cooperation with Nonsuch Brewing in Winnipeg. Interesting can art. They are being responsible citizens and... Uh, Paying ten cents per to the artist who uh, who did the original artwork, which is pretty cool. Oh wow, that's uh, an interesting kind of a sour overtone. Still got the usual roasty stuff, but uh, yeah, that's different. Anyway, uh, so tonight I'm going to be taking a look, a closer look at this optical power meter that I pulled out of the mailbag. Was that last week only? And I'll be comparing it to this Exfo uh, FPM 300 meter that I use at work. And to help us make that comparison, I'll be using this uh, JDSU uh, OLS 35 light source, which will be generating our optical signal coming out of there. And I'll send it into these two. Now, these two I trust. Um, they, I use them quite frequently at work. I just brought them in from my truck and let them thaw out so that we can uh, play with them here. But this is the cheap Chinese one that I that I picked up at an eBay auction for less than seven dollars, which is just completely ridiculous. I mean, normally, even this same meter goes for what thirty some dollars Canadian which is still ridiculously cheap for a piece of test equipment like this. So the x meter that I'm going to be testing this against is this one. And this is the used price on eBay that they tend to be going for. So if this one stacks up even vaguely like it, it might be an option for light duty stuff, but or just like a knock around one or something to take into the trenches if you don't want to... Uh, risk your good meter but i don't know whether i'd fully trust it uh, we will find out the tests i'm going to be doing are just super basic tests i'm basically just going to be transmitting from here a known light level and seeing what it's received at through these fibers on these two meters and comparing them uh, this cheap one claims to be good within plus or minus 0.2 db in a range between minus 70 and plus 10 dbm i'm assuming dbm and it uh is capable of reading uh, wavelengths of light, colors sort of, but it's not visible, uh, between 850 and 1625 nanometers, which is comparable to the specs that this guy has as well, um, if that one's actually telling the truth. So this one came up in 1310, which is sort of the default if you're not doing anything special for most single mode fiber which is what these particular ones are. So this guy came with two connectors, uh, an SC, which is what I've got on there right now. That's what the female side of it looks like. And there is the male side. It also has this FC connector. It's a, a ferrule connector um, with a screw on kind of a locking ring. These these ones just click into place with a with a little latch. As I'm connecting things, I'm using my little fiber cleaning pen. It's got a little strand of lint-free cloth in there, and when you put it in and give it a click, you see the little piece of uh, of lint-free cloth strip there. It pushes in, rotates. Can you see that? And then retracts back and at the same time the little spool of fiber in there advances and winds up so it only ever gets used once it's a consumable item they're available in all different types of connectors but so it's just always good practice to clean your connectors every single time before you connect them to anything um, this can also do the male ends just with that little adapter there so I'm going to carry on and clean all these and uh, plug them in and I'll be right back. So well, here we are set up. Um, the light source is set to minus 7 dBm. That's kind of where we leave it normally just so we don't accidentally blow anything up by power, overpowering a connect, or an SFD or something. And it came up at 1310. This guy's sitting at 1310. So when I turn 
the light source on, I'm transmitting at minus 7, I am receiving at minus 7.81. So through this, these connectors back here and the loopback and everything, I'm losing 0.8 dB. But that doesn't matter, that's just our test rig. What matters is does this thing see the same level as this thing does? 6.99, okay, um, minus 6.99 dBm. So it's reading a little bit higher than this guy. Plus or minus 0.2, it's a little bit off. That's not horrible though. Let's just go back, turn the laser off. Laser on, 7.86. So yeah, basically this guy is reading about 0.8, give or take, higher than this guy. Hmm, interesting. I wonder if they're the same at different uh, power levels, if I reduce the power level a little bit. These are fiber optic attenuators. Each one is 5 dB. They're different brands, but they do the same thing. So these two combined should be 10 dB, which means we should be seeing... Minus 17, give or take, on these two meters. Let me just hook those up. So here we are with the 10 dB pad in there. Power that guy on, transmitting at 7, receiving a minus 18.25. The important thing is, what does this guy say in comparison? So minus 17.5, okay. So that's about three quarters of a dB off of there. This guy claims to be plus or minus 0.2. I'm going to assume this guy's probably pretty similar, so ballpark close? Pretty good, actually. Better than I expected. All right, that's enough of that, though. I'm going to crack inside this guy and see what makes it tick and uh, see what the build quality looks like. Hang on, I'll just disconnect this and I'll be back in a second. So there's six screws on the back that hold this thing together, four in the corners, and then two up there on the lanyard clips, which are a little bit smaller. And two AA batteries, and there it comes apart. So we've got the usual little uh, resistive keypad on the front there. Very nice little molding. And it bridges onto there. The circuit board's held in by a couple of clips, and this screw here. I'm not sure if that screw holds the board to the case or just to this little piece here. You can see that little piece there isn't isn't connected to the case it moves i think that might be i'm a little bit cautious because those two wires two tiny little wires there you can just barely see them go up to the sensor then again i didn't buy this thing for using it in the field i bought it to take it apart and take a look inside it okay i'm gonna have to take that screw off Hope I don't destroy that. Uh... Okay, so now what happens? Okay, that's coming out. That's coming out. So just the power wire is holding it in. And yeah, that's just held by the sensor wires. Those two wires there. Okay, so I'll have to be a little bit careful with this. What can we see here? This is a super power meter. Uh, the board's part number is DXP20B. And it calls itself optical. So not that much going on in the back of here, really. Let's just end a few optional items that aren't populated. Oh. Okay, I remember seeing on eBay um, similar meters that had another connector, another sensor up there. So maybe that's what's going on here. Or maybe it can also be a generator. Oh, okay. Um, this one that I saw with the second connector up there, suspiciously above those unpopulated positions on the board, that is a visual fault locator aka a ruby red or a visible light something like that it will send a visible beam of light down the fiber so that you can locate the other end relatively easily 
yeah, a visual fault indicator, similar, well, similar function anyway to this one that I repaired a few weeks ago. That'd be kind of handy having it all in one, but I'm carrying this around isn't that much of an inconvenience as long as you don't let the batteries crud up and die in it. So let's get in a little closer and just see what all these chips are on here. Up at the top, we have a Holtec HT1621B, which is managing the LCD. Pretty obviously, you can see all the pins going up to the LCD on the other side. Underneath it, we have an Atmel 80 Mega, what is that, 16A? Clearly a microcontroller. And it's crystal over there. Okay, that's pretty obvious. What is this guy here? A Max 706R? Not quite sure what that guy is. It appears to be a power supply voltage monitor, or a precision voltage monitor to keep track of the uh, voltage for the microprocessor. Okay. Guess it makes sense, especially given where it physically is located. And down here we have a from ST a 74HC4051. Again, not one that I'm familiar with. Back to the Google. 74HC4051, 8 channel analog MUX DMUX. High speed CMOS. Okay. Wonder what that's doing. Other than, you know, multiplexing, demultiplexing stuff. So this guy looks like it's going out to a bunch of vias and possibly these gang of resistors surrounding there. So what's those going to? Oh, right. The, uh, the little pads. I guess that makes sense. Multiplexing them so it's not chewing up as many lines on the processor. Sure, why not? A BBOPA2336. Is that an op amp? Is that a uh, precision op amp? That sounds familiar. That's exactly what it is. It is a rail to rail single supply micro power op amp oh, in the range of 90 to 100 dB gain. All righty then. So, this little guy, I can't find his number anywhere that I look online, but given that it's right beside the incoming power and in close proximity to this obvious little uh, buck and or boost converter. I'm going to guess it's related to that. Seems like a fairly safe bet. So there's nothing too highly complex on here. It's a microcontroller, um, an LCD driver, and a few little bits of circuitry. There's an ISP header over there, so you could probably reprogram it if you wanted to, but I don't know why you'd want to. Um... It's got a USB connector there. And I don't know what all these guys are other than maybe dealing with that guy, but maybe not again, because that connects to the USB. So maybe that is also for programming or grabbing more data off this thing in the future in a different version. I don't know. Generally, relatively surprised with this. I'm guessing that the op amp is probably amplifying the signal from that. Maybe, I'm not sure. But uh, that would be a reasonable guess. But anyway, it looks like the only analog to digital conversion is going to be in this uh, Atmel uh, chip here. I'm not sure how precise that's going to be for the purposes that we're using it for here. But based on the quick tests earlier, it seems to work. Ruggedness and build quality, though, this is a little bit suspect. Um, although I guess there's nothing under normal use that's not going to get abused that bad there. Um, this case is quite rigid plastic, so it'd probably take some damage if you dropped it. Let me see if I can find any markings on it, because that's what AVE would do. I'm not seeing anything indicating the, the plastic type in there at all. Is there any glass fiber in this thing? No, it doesn't feel like it. That's just straight up plastic. There's nothing resisting the cutting. Okay. Not the most rigid thing in the world, but when it's all clamshelled together, it's actually fairly strong. I don't know how well it would handle a few uh, trips off the top of a ladder onto a concrete floor, though. This thing at least has kind of a softer, more pliable overmolding. Is that overmolding or is that? Yeah, that's overmolding. Uh, on top of the plastic. 
it's going to have some shock absorption if you drop it. Obviously something that's testing this kind of stuff, you're not going to want to drop it, but shit happens out in the field, right? All right, batteries back in. It's a little odd. This kickstand still works, yeah. Does it still power on? It does, woohoo. So this was never going to be a really in-depth test because other than just the tool, the tools that I use on a daily basis, I don't really have any way of giving this a good thorough shakedown test. Inside, it's cheap, but it looks reasonable for what it is. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Comments and questions down below. Um, like I said, I'm not going to be using this as my daily driver at work or anything because I got this one. But there might be an application if I have to send it someplace with somebody that has the potential for it getting destroyed. I don't know. Uh, comments, questions, as usual, down below. Thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.